I'll take you for a ride on the devil ship I'll take you for a ride where you sink or swim Now come with me and let this story begin we're going to do this. For those who don't know who Pantelis is, I've been on Pantelis. I've been on your channel six, oh, uh, eight times, yeah, ten yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. It's, You're one uh, of the most invited guests. I am the Gad Sad to Pantel. I am the Gad Sad to Rogan. I, well, hold on. I am what your Gad, Gad Sad. is to Rogan, you I, are to me. Yeah. So, and, and it's every time I come back to Montreal, I meet Pantelis and we do a podcast. But for my chat, who might not know who you are, mm -hmm. Pantelis, tell the world. Uh, I'm a comedian, podcaster from Montreal. I'm Greek uh, from Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I've been podcasting since 2010, one of the OGs in Canada, uh, doing stand-up since 2012. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to be at the, the Just for Last Festival this summer. If people want to come, they could come check me out. They could see me on tour, pantelliscomedy.com. And I don't like uh, Justin Trudeau. I, that, that, that you and 36 million other Canadians. We started talking about this before the show. Your shirt, if we can get oh, my in. my Empire Strip. So I, I, I was like, I haven't seen the new ones, but I don't remember those characters being in there. That looks like a mix between the fifth element creature and... Yeah, this is the burlesque parody Star Wars, uh, The Empire Strips Back. It's a show going across the world. Uh, and I hosted it when it came here in Montreal uh, and Ottawa. And they might come back. Uh, it's, it is I that they plugged to host it because I'm a very funny dude in two languages. Pentel's okay. Look, mm. we know each other, and this is gonna be like a weird crossover because I'm gonna. Someone actually, the, 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 it's so funny because I just got a message from the girl who did this, who was playing this character. So that's funny. All right, go what, on. Was it related to you being on? I don't know. I don't think so. Now. I'm not gonna read it now. It's just it's probably gonna be just comedy related. Like, hey, I saw this, but we um move my barrette around here. Um, no, Pentel's. So like, we, we've known each other. This is gonna be like a, a crossover. Years. Well, I'm gonna interview you to some extent, but then yeah. we're gonna just talk like what we always talk about. Um. You're a stand-up comic. Yeah. And this is something... I've never understood how people get into it. I know it's always like somewhat by accident, but then also being a stand-up comic in a world of political correctness, cancel joke, you know, where you get canceled for making jokes, how the hell do you do it? Now or how I started? How you started and what it was like at the peak of the... You can make certain jokes, but not other jokes, and now it seems to have come back with a vengeance. Well, you know me well enough to understand that, especially when it was at its peak... Uh, and I was working nine to five at that time when I was still doing stand up. So that was the time where you should. What shut were you up. doing nine to five? I used to work in video games. I worked at EA, and then I worked in virtual reality. I was a producer for a company that we would uh, produce virtual reality and augmented reality projects. Uh, and that was the peak of kind of not cancel culture, but you got to be careful what you say because it's always. And I was always the same person. I was like, "Fuck that! I'm gonna say what I want to say. If it's funny, I'm gonna say it." So I haven't changed really. Everything around me changed. And people were not agreeing with my risks in the beginning. They're like, why would you say that on a podcast? You got to go to work the next day and you just call the prime minister a retard. And I was like, yeah, that's how I felt. I still like if they questioned me, I feel the same way today. So I just continued being who I was. Then I quit everything and just put all my energy in podcasting and stand up, which was another big risk. Uh, now it's working out for me. Started doing it in French as well. And in French, they're like, you know how Quebec is. They're big on culture, on the arts. So as long as your goal is to be funny, they don't really mind you being offensive. What they what they don't like is if you're just harassing people. They're not going to go for that. But if it's to be funny, they support the hell. It's a culture place. They, they love culture in Quebec. So I'm kind of in a safe space for me. I can say whatever the fuck I want. And a lot of people hate me for it. Now, yeah. French, though, the, the market um, for comedy, I mean, you, you, when you're in English, you're competing with the rest of America. When yeah. you're in French, it's ex you know pretty much limited to Quebec. I don't know what market exists in New Brunswick. But are you are you in the France French market? Not well. They know me. Like they listen to the French cast. The French cast is pretty popular. But I don't go to France. I might go. There's something cooking. Maybe in November, I might go to a festival in Switzerland. We're looking at that. Um, but apart from that, I'm going to be new to the French in France. I'm not sure I would. I'm not sure I'd go to France th these days a yeah. any more than I'd go to England or well, any. The way part I of talk Europe. shit. Yeah, they're going to be. They're going to be upset. Yeah, we had one of our uh, one of our podcast partners draw the picture of the Prophet Muhammad last week. So I don't know how welcome I am in France. Well, I, I mean, I didn't draw it. He drew it, but. I where, did, where did he draw it? Over here at the other studio. At the other studio on, During who, the podcast. on whose podcast? Uh, the Intellectuals, on a podcast that I produce on the, on the network because um, basically he, he's kind of lost all time and he keeps getting himself into trouble, this guy Adam. And he was saying how I'm never going to fall for a trap again. No one's ever going to trick me to put my life in danger ever again. So I was like, never. He's like, never. I'm never going to be tricked. And I go, while we're at it, can you draw a picture of what you think the Prophet Muhammad looks like? He's like, I will, but no one's ever going to... He was unaware that, it's, that you're not supposed to do it. So he drew the, this caricature of what he thought Muhammad would look like and he put up on the screen and I was like so you're never taking another risk with your life again he's like never I'm never taking another I'm only doing safe things while he brought that picture up it was comedy gold well Com that, that is comedy gold except the consequences could be <laughs> real life there may be no. a fatwa on the intellectuals but <laughs> the, uh, uh, what, what, what the risk did, I'm willing to take well what did the uh, was, did the drawing look like 
it would have another room. Or it looked just, like a stick figure. Like you couldn't tell what it is. It did. Well, that's the that's the, like the philosophical, not absurdity, yeah. but the philosophical question is: draw a smiley face, and it's fine up until you time up until the moment where you say like this represents that which you're not exactly. allowed to do. Uh, unlike you know what you might have like an offensive stereotypical cartoon like uh, how you depict. Uh, oh no no! If he did, he didn't do anything like uh, raunchy. The, the the premise there of the joke was the fact that he wasn't realizing because when I when I figured out that he didn't know that you're not supposed to do it, and he was so adamant about I'm never take another risk again. No one's gonna trick me into doing anything dangerous ever again. That's what made it hilarious. Now, Pantelis, ah. every time I come on with you and every time I start talking about COVID and every, we've talked about it at length and we're going to get into some crazy stuff today. I don't want to talk about COVID anymore, but go on. But let's say people ask, you say like, you talk about the culture of French Canadian comedy yeah. and it's sort of rebellious. It's sort of, yeah. uh, I don't know if the word is indignant. Vive le Québec, baby. Yeah. Yes, well, vive le Québec libre, which is like, you know, the, the playoff of vive la France. Everybody asks me, how the hell French Canadians who survived hundreds of years fighting for their identity, fighting the powers that be, how they bent over perhaps even more than the rest of Anglo-Canada when it came to submitting to tyranny during COVID. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I asked the same question on the podcast. I think a lot of it has to do with uh, trust. A lot of people trust the government as if it's a parent. And you hear people talk about that. They'll, dis, they'll say, why listen to government? They, they have our best interests at heart. No, they're human beings like us. Uh, most of them don't give a shit. It's a job for them. And they don't know any better. That's the thing is they'll lie. So the difference is regular people, when they don't know, most will be like, I don't fucking really know. It seems like a good idea. It seems like they won't. They'll just, they'll, they'll go into the cult route and be like, this is what you must do. You got to save your neighbors. The only way to save your neighbor is to wear a mask while you're swimming. Um, when you're eating at a restaurant, while you're eating, you don't need a mask. But when you stand up, you better put that mask on or everyone's getting AIDS. So they just say stupid shit that a lot of people follow. They're like it's my parents saying it. That's how they see it. And we fall into this trap like we saw over here, which was just crazy. You'd walk into stores. They wouldn't let you in if you didn't have the right mask. No, we, we had the, well, we were here at the yeah. same time. We had the vaccine passport. Now I'm looking at. Fuck that, dude. I had paper, paper straws. straws. I also remember the, uh, when you'd walk into like a Walmart and they sealed off areas, even though it was right there. Like I couldn't buy something if there was a yellow tag behind yeah. it. So even though it's at arm's length, I could get it. I remember seeds. Uh, they're like, no, you can't have those. And I go, well, why? It's going to go to waste. Just I'm right here. I'll just grab it. You're scanning it anyway. What do you care? Like, no, you can't do that. It was, uh, I mean, I, I go back to the pictures every now and again. They have the whole sections uh, saran wrapped off. Uh, gift cards, birthday cards. They had like socks. And I remember at one point I was at, uh, it was in Alexis Neon and there was a, a homeless person trying to buy socks. And the clerk was saying, no, those are a non-essential item. So you don't get to buy them. And it wasn't, it wasn't like a, a skit or a joke. It was real life. It's not essential. Who, who the fuck are you to decide what's essential? God. I mean, is that is, is basically what the government thinks they are? I don't, I know, I know how old you are, but for those 37. who 37. 37. Yeah. Uh, born what? and raised in Montreal. <laughs> Poseidon just, you blew. Did you not know that? No, I thought it was like 25. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you do look young, and I thought you were 33. It's the opposite. He's younger than me, but he looks divorced. It's, uh. Poseidon, how old are you? Uh, 52. Uh, You're no. not 52, I, my what butt. Are you, 32? <laughs> I'm 30. 30. 30. 30. I'm, I'm the old man in the house. I guess. 45. Oh, you, see, you don't really look 45 either. I don't know, I don't know well, if I can see. The, 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 sun, the sun in Florida is helping. The lighting is good. It doesn't, my hair doesn't look particularly gray, but born and raised in Montreal. Yeah. Uh, Pantelis is your, la, is your last name. My first name. It's my name, Pantelis. Yeah. Well, my well, last name is Paliudakis, yeah. Your first, first name is Pantelis? Yeah. I thought your last name was Pantelis. Well, that would be insane. Why would people call me by my last name? Well, I, well, I would say insane. Pantelis as a first name, yeah. I've never heard of in my entire life. Really? N never. You have no idea. You know me for years. Yeah, I thought I thought it was Pantelis, and I was I, I never even thought about asking. Oh, like Rogan? Name. They just call him Rogan. Yeah, yeah no, well, no, it's my first name. It's Pantelis. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and born and raised. May I ask what your parents do? My well, my they're divorced right now. My dad lives in in Greece, but my mother she worked. Um, she did a lot of jobs before her last stuff. Before she retired, she was in the hospital. She was caretaker for like uh, patients that were. They had dementia. They were dying. Old people. She worked with a lot of old people at the end of her life, right. at the end of her career. Jesus Christ, her life. Yeah. Now, dude. So let's let's. What the hell's been going? On? Now that we're going to get into the section of this discussion where it will be like old times, man. What the, yeah. what the hell is going on in Canada? I I, 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 I came over the border. I drove this time. I didn't fly in, but when I flew into Toronto for the Rumble event, it's like entering a different country. Uh, drove over here. You know, there was no no. There was a border crossing. Uh, what are they called? And the agents were on. Uh, strike, or they were going to be on strike? Everyone's on strike here, so it doesn't surprise me. SAQ, the Société Alcool de Québec, I noticed some uh, stickers on the front door. Are they on strike as well? They might be. Uh, I know that we went to the casino once a few months ago with my friends, and they decided we're shutting down at 2 because we're on strike. 
was like, well, you're on strike. Shouldn't you not be open? I don't understand how any of this shit works. Everyone's just always on strike. It's 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 kind of like it's kind of like France to some extent. Everyone's on strike. What is I mean, I, I'm coming back and seeing this. You've been here the entire time. Have you been here for the last two years? Have things gotten worse, crazier? Am I going crazy or is homelessness uh, homelessness on the rise? Worse? That that's objectively worse. That you can't deny it. That's true. Uh, I think we have stats for that. Homelessness is worse. People are starting to wake up more. They're not accepting as much of the fuckery. We'll call it. Though there are some people that are still waiting. If the government tells them tomorrow, slit your neighbor's throat to because of COVID, there's some people that are still waiting to do it. But the majority are kind of waking up. Uh, economically, it's never been, in my lifetime, it's never been this bad. I've never had so many complaints, like after shows, people talking to me about life and just telling me about it's impossible to make it because of rent, the price of groceries, the money that we make, uh, the interest rates for anything you want, a car or your loans. What, or your, actually, what, what are the interest rates now? He knows. He's, he's my guy. Poseidon, you have, you have a uh, car? For cars, it depends if you want to buy new or used. New is like uh, between 5 and 8%. A used is between 8 and 12 like if you have a good credit, I mean. Um, houses, it's like 3 4%, which is insane. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. So, well, now hold on. When when Poseidon's talking, is that that's what they saw, right? So they can. When I'm on my phone, we're gonna see this. Oh yeah, they they could see him, or yeah. he could even put the camera on himself, but he won't. Um, it you know it, it, it's it's wild. Um, Quebec was in the news recently because McGill was increasing its tuition at the provincial level. McGill is the university, like you know, the main university. This was yeah. before the encampments, which are now are the the bigger issue. Um. What else is going on in Quebec financially, economically, politically? Uh, well, the teachers are still upset. We're not really paying our teachers. The hospitals are overrun. Uh, there's no, you can't get a doctor. It's insane when you th when you actually put it down on paper. We we have, uh, Quebec is the place that has like the most natural resources. Uh, like I said, culturally it's strong, but it's run like the rest of Canada. So it doesn't work. Have you been following the, uh, I would call it pro-Palestine or the Israeli-Palestinian issue that's been sort of, Imported and now yep. domesticated. Have you been following this? I've like, been following quite a bit, yeah. I have you gone to McGill to see the... I, uh, I drive by all the time. Uh, I've seen different versions of it. One time they blocked me. I had an uh, interview to go do downtown, a uh, radio interview, and uh, I was late because of them. Um, I get... Like, I, I'm a guy who loves, like... Uh, I like protesting. I like speaking my mind. But a lot of stuff that's happening now isn't helping anything. It doesn't make any sense. Um, like, there, I, I know that apart from the protest, there's some restaurants, Jewish places that are getting shot up. Uh, as a message, but I don't know what a guy who owns a deli has to do with the IDF. They're not related. It's crazy. Um, the encampments now, they've moved to Victoria Square where yeah. they're just spray painting statues, which again, I don't know how that helps. You're vandalizing and you're you're causing problems here. It, and the people that you're disturbing, they go, oh, we're going to disturb them so that they do something. But they can't, like I, for example, I'm getting disturbed. I have zero authority. I'm not even Jewish. I don't know. I have zero authority with what happens in Israel. I can't do anything. So you're disturbing my life. I'm just getting pissed off, but there's nothing I could do. Even the mayor, the mayor has no fucking power for what happens in Israel. I'm surprised if, unless Trudeau wakes up and says, we're going to stop selling weapons or we're going to, there's no way. Well, dude, it is, um, you know, the, what they are, the demands are, uh, what is it called? Disclose, divest, uh, whatever it is, stop doing business with. And now they're going after Case de Depot, which is like sort of the retirement fund that they want the if a retirement funds not to invest in anything related to Israel. Okay, so here's the thing about that. It's a slippery slope. So now we're blaming everyone that's Israeli for a war. If we start going down that route, it's very dangerous because I can't, like, you can't blame every Arab for a terrorist attack. That's insane. You can't do, you can't just group everyone together. It, uh, for example, the U.S., we fucking love America. Fucking love America. Uh, if something happens, if they do something bad, if, uh, like, fucking Hillary, when they love to bomb kids in Syria, are you going to hate every single American because of it? We can't start going, isn't that what racism is? You're just grouping everyone together. It's very dangerous to do that. I hate people that do that shit. And so now what the youth in university who should know better are doing that? What drives me nuts, first, I mean, I'd say like they've imported these uh, international conflicts and they've imported these these policies where it, yeah. it became normal to hate all of the people by virtue of the government with Russia. I mean, that was when it was normal. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it, be, it became normal to idolize all of the people of a culture because they're the good guys, Ukraine, even though Ukraine has number one export was human trafficking for the last 30 some odd years. Nothing to brag about, but brag. No, no, it's, it's like it, that it's been normalized in the same way it was normalized to rat on your neighbor. What, what the hypocrisy that drives me nuts is however you feel about the conflict and however, even if you, you, you could even accept the premise, because uh, I think it's not really arguable. There, there are certain war crimes being committed. All right. 
They've picked Israel as the one to boycott, divest, etc. But China is okay. Venezuela is okay. Saudi Arabia is okay. And all of these very activist people have been mum when other groups have committed atrocities because I guess they need their iPhones, they need their Samsungs, and it would be too much of an inconvenience for them to actually do this as a consistent life principle versus a convenient political issue. Viva, a NATO ally, Turkey, has occupied one-third of Cyprus. One-third since the 70s. No one says shit if we're talking about it. And when you bring it up, they don't want to talk about it. Currently right now, Armenians are getting slaughtered by Turkey and Azerbaijan forces. We're not talking about it because it's not convenient. It's not cool. So I'm all for stopping all these wars. I'm an anti-war guy. I'd rather negotiate. I don't think anyone should die over a what politicians have decided. Because you see what's happening now with Palestine and Israel, for example, the people that are dying, it's not soldiers on either side, it's innocent people. It, the Israelis, when uh, the border jumping had happened and all that, who who got kidnapped, who got killed? Innocent people. That were. What's happening with the Palestinians? Who's really, the majority of people getting bombed or hurt? Kids, innocent people. And it's like that in every war. Look at the Ukraine. The majority is always people who don't want to be in this conflict. So I'm full anti-war. But they people aren't honest. So they go with what's convenient and what's trendy. So right now, this is what's trendy. For a while, it was the Ukraine. Cyprus isn't trendy. Even though it, this a NATO ally has occupied this island for fucking since the seventies, we don't want to talk about it because we don't want to talk shit about an ally, an ally. Um, say, wait, uh, are the Armenians? I don't know why the Armenians are not chic. People don't like them. I don't know what the fuck it is, but we're not talking about that. They're getting, they've always been getting slaughtered. They're getting slaughtered right now. We don't want to talk about it. So that's why I don't care about this virtue signaling bullshit. I, I'm against war, um, but I don't care what these people are saying and screaming because I know they don't really care about human life. They care about what's trendy. Well, I, I've, I've come to the realization that I think it was James Lindsay that said it, but it, it's not about the issue. It's just about destabilizing Western society. I, I import the conflict. doesn't matter what it is. If it's convenient to exploit, they'll do it. They'll go and occupy parks and tear down statues. And yeah. it's a question of causing chaos for the purpose of this sort of anarchist progressivist agenda. But how are we progressing? I, they call it progressive. What's progressive about this? It, progressive, I, I, I've, we're I've, regressing. Well, it, it, movement for the sake of movement. Just go anywhere so long as you're moving. It's progress, even if you're moving backwards or at least moving in a sufficient circle that you've, you know, you've effectively gone backwards. But progress, progressivism is men competing in women's sports now. I mean, it, it's that's not progress. That is well, it is action. progress because we're trying to make these sports watchable. Viva, you don't understand <laughs> the main goal here. I want to see made layups. Have you heard the, I mean, I, I, that is, um, <laughs> well, there's going to be some, some chat on my crowd who's going to um, gonna see some humor today. Uh, Brittany Griner, have you heard the rumor that she's a, she's a he? What does she look like? Br Brittany Griner was the, uh, um, the basketball player who was locked up in Russia. Oh yeah. He brought it up. Some people bring it up. I don't know. I mean, to be honest. I kind of don't care. I can see it, but a lot of people, like athletes, if there's a lot of testosterone, you look kind of a bit more manly. So I don't know. She's a tall. That, that was the one. That was chest one. Photo. But I don't even know. Could be who that is in that video. That was the one where they, where she was doing uh, shots, uh, shots, uh, basketball shots from a pool. We'll get the video. I kind of. I but there was, there was a conspiracy as to whether or not she was kept in a men's prison in Russia, and whether or not that had to do with. I, th there's there's too many of yeah, these. Yeah. I sort of. Oh, let's see here, Brittany Griner. Is a man. That is not me reading it. That is coming from a YouTube video. Of that. I kind of don't. I don't know. I don't care. Like, what I mean is I don't mind, rather. Like, I, it's not my business. I'm not in the WNBA. If they, it's up to them. And, and, it, and it could be one of those. Um, and it's not up to, I don't give a shit. No, it could, it could be one of those anomalies where someone might actually look like that. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah, it doesn't bug me. Pantelis, yeah. what's going on in Canada? Yeah, so we, we were talking before. You, uh, am I allowed uh, talking about who you're trying to get as an interview? Pierre Poiliev. Okay, good. Future Prime Minister, yeah. I'm trying to get him on. Uh, they don't do... It's very... What I'm hearing, they don't really do uh, long-form interviews. It's very hard for them. There's another politician to a Quebec one that I'm trying to get, and they're like, we're going to try to get him on in the fall. Um, they're scared to do long-form interviews. They don't... They're scared to say the wrong thing, which to me is not a good sign. No, it's... it's if it's, you're scared to say the wrong thing, that means that you're not really... You don't know what the fuck you're doing. Like, just come, shoot the shit. Let's see who you really are. It, it would be a no-brainer. I mean, whether you like him or hate him or want him to win or not, RFK Jr. doing the long-format interview rounds, I, it's garnered immeasurable support and immeasurable uh, social awareness. Yeah. If, if Pierre did it, he's, he seems like a guy who can think on his feet. I, mean, I thought it would be a fun interview. Yeah, it, it would be not that I want Pierre to win particularly. I don't like the conservatives or trust them, but it would be 
I, I, I think it'll be a, a, net a positive. deal maker. I, yeah. A thousand percent. His team doesn't see it that way. I think. I'm gonna try to convince them though, but they don't. Well, see we'll it try. That we're way. gonna we're gonna snip it and clip it and say, Pierre, don't be a don't be a sissy and yeah. come down for a lot. I mean, people and he could do it. it in English or in French. I could do it in either he one. Could do, you could switch back and forth yeah. and show the and show the world what real your bilingualism. To be. Yeah, and Pierre's yeah. put. Uh, so, how, I mean, has it? Where where? What are the state of the discussion? Like, is it? Uh, is he still? Th- are you are you back and forth and trying to make well, it happen? It or? was for a while, and like, oh, we're not. And then now, because I saw he's in Montreal, I reached out again to his people yesterday. Uh, and then I also tagged him on Facebook. So now like, there's like, a couple hundred people that are like, you have to go. You should go do the interview. You should go to the interview. Hopefully that puts some pressure on him. Uh, I sent another email last night waiting for his guy to reply to me. Good people. Just it's not up to them. You know, it's a group effort. Like whether, but I think it would be a great fucking interview. It, it would, it would be amazing, especially yeah. it would not be a sabotage or a, you know, yeah. ask some, yeah, have a discussion and ask some hard questions. Yeah. What, um, my you, toughest guests right now are him and Alex Jones. They're the two guys that I'm trying to get on and that are the toughest, you know? This. I, yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. This we had an open dialogue with his people for a while and then it just went, um, just went cold. We'll talk well, about I, it after the show. Yeah, for sure. And I always, you know, you know what's going on with Alex right now and mm-hmm. with, uh, that's why I want to talk to him too. I, I, I wanted to get his, uh, the whole story out and how because him it's fucking insane they're, they're just trying to kill him at this point they're, they're trying to kill everybody i mean it's, if they kill him with the process make him have a heart attack uh bankrupt him in the meantime it's 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 a vicious level of politics that i've never seen in my entire life but it's 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 gone beyond hit pieces and slander to lock up bankrupt and make your life a living hell until you until you have a heart attack until he yeah, just takes his own life yeah, Jones, I mean, when they're talking about the January Sixers, that's definitely happened, and that's definitely, uh, as far as they're concerned, uh, a not unfortunate consequence of their abuse. But with Alex, I mean, there's no chance Alex does that. It's just a question of, you know, that stress. You know, they, they mentioned it with Trump. He's an old man with all of the stress of these lawsuits. You know, people have heart attacks. Oh, Trump and was the craziest. I was trying to explain to him what they were doing because they go 30, over 30 counts. This guy's a felon. But it's the same thing repeated. It was the payments. Yeah, it, 30 payments. Four, they go four, char- four charges per month. Three or four charges per month for six or seven months. And then there were two. It, it was, everybody knows it's it's a load of crap. I mean, my crowd and anybody watching knows yeah. it's a load of crap. But 34, felony. He's a he's a career criminal. He's a goddamn because, gangster. Because of one payment stretched over six months, that was absolutely lawful. It's so crazy that we're able to do this in the modern world. It, it's it is it's revelatory. Are you gonna you're watching the debate tonight? Yeah, I was I was gonna do it with you, but you got uh, your own idea with Barnes. Something I'm gonna watch. I'm I'm gonna watch your stream. It's gonna be uh, th- so the issue, and I was looking it up earlier. Yeah, let's talk. I I heard Tim Pool saying something about this. So Tim Pool said it. Crowder said it, and now it seems I'm reading. Uh, you know, you have to take everything with a grain of salt, but Nar- Mario Nafal on um, Twitter put it a tweet, says, WTF, debate lockdown, CNN restricts coverage. Is this America or North Korea? Uh, CNN has implemented insanely strict measures for the first 2024 debate, effectively banning citizen journalists and independent coverage. No one can use any video or audio from the debate without explicit permission. Kiss my bottom. Do you see what they're doing, Poseidon? Do you get it? 100% so basically, they me and you wouldn't be able to stream tonight because it's on CNN, so we wouldn't be able to actually show it and talk about it. So they're trying to hide. I get why, though, because the guy that they're supporting has no clue where he is. So there's a chance that he'll say something crazy. Well, but what, they, what they're effectively trying to do is control the pre, during, and after. If nobody can use clips for, uh, without their express permission, it'll control their the spin. It'll, yeah, their spin and, and other people's, uh, you know, making sure reality stays straight. There's uh, Ian Corzine who's another YouTube law talking guy, says CNN is breaking the law on this one. Here's how copyright law as the producer of the debate, CNN holds a valid copyright on the footage as an audiovisual work. This gives CNN certain exclusive rights, including the right to control reproduction and distribution of the material. Okay. Fair use is one of the exceptions. Legal analysis is another one. There's no, there's no question it's going to be fair use. It's a presidential it, debate. Well, I've seen some dudes, I won't mention any names, and they're not in the law community. They're in the left-wing propaganda community. They think that their fair use consists of playing the debate with their stupid little face in the corner and they say nothing and do nothing of value during the entire rebroadcast. That I can understand. But it sounds like what CNN wants to do is control the audio that people, audio and video that people can use after the debate so they can continue to lie about what happened, suppress and take down. And you have that in conjunction now that I talk out loud. You think Joe Biden, there's a, like, what's the over under on him shitting his pants? Tonight? Well, I, I, I think, I mean, I, I put my prediction out there. We will never know if he shits his pants unless, unless Trump says, What's that smell? Uh, Joe, but, <laughs> did you just shit your fucking Joe. pants? <laughs> it, it could, I mean, it could have, it's going to be a debacle, I think, for, for Biden. But remember, just yesterday, you have that Biden v. Missouri case where the court didn't greenlight Biden interference with social media companies to, you know, 
permit pressure, but you know, declared the plaintiffs uh, without legal standing to challenge it. You have that ruling yesterday, and now you have CNN saying, we're going to control all clips, snips, and audio, which is basically going to allow them to control social media afterwards and force Twitter, force others to take down clips so they can control a narrative and probably continue to propagate disinformation. This sounds like a very sinister plan coming together. What a life. It's amazing. So you're, I came to Florida, uh, what, like a month, a month and a half ago? Where'd you go? I went to Miami, uh, and I had a good time. Trump has a lot of hotels there, by the way. I noticed while driving. I was like, fuck, they're all next to each other. Uh, I ate well. There's a lot of Argentinians. Yeah. Cube, well, obviously Cuban. Obviously Cuban. Argentinian. But we knew that. But a lot of Argenti- I, li- I ate a lot of Argentinian food. Love it. It's, they've got amazing meats. Uh, and I'm a meat guy. Fucking proteins. I don't think it, nobody goes to Miami and doesn't have a good time. It's not like going to New York and you get your car, you get robbed or mugged, whatever. Miami, I've, I've been going down not often, but every now and again for a podcast or whatever. It's frick, It's like New York with energy and life. And life. It's amazing. Yeah, I had a good time. I had a good time and I got why you're in Florida. I get it. I mean, there's some shitholes too in Miami. Like there's like, there's a lot of extremes. Like I drove through some neighborhoods where I was like, I'm in GTA. <laughs> So, but it's like that in every major city. You can't avoid it. If you want to have the good, you're going to have the bad. But the weather was great. Uh, I like Florida, and I get why you're there. Are you uh, thinking about it? Yeah, yeah. About it? Oh, yeah. There's. Uh, I'm looking at a few different options. Uh, all of which involve leaving Canada or leaving Montreal? Leaving Canada. Florida or Texas right now is what I'm looking at as a possibility. Texas, I mean, the, Florida, the only issue, stay in the summer. It's wicked hot. Uh, I don't on, mind the heat. Yeah, you know, and... and, and you go to the beach and yeah. you stay indoors during the day. It's sort of like it's the opposite of Canada. In Canada, like wintertime, you go to movies during the day, you stay inside. Same thing during the summer in Florida. But politically, spiritually, it's just, it's it's like whenever I cross back into Canada, it feels like visiting an ex-girlfriend who's who's lost her mind. And uh, it's not, it's, it doesn't make me feel good. I mean, to be fair to the people, it was years. It took years to get here. It took years of indoctrination in universities, TV, um, the leadership of the country. It, it wasn't like overnight the Canadians just switched and became insane. It took years of pushing and just prodding until they, it was, it's like Stockholm Syndrome. We've been held captive for so long. And they just don't see it. That's the thing. They don't, the way they speak about businesses and everyone just wants like the government to give them stuff. They don't realize where that money's coming from. Or It's like th- there was a saying about socialism, uh, about mice uh, getting the cheese. I don't know if you ever heard this. Where what's the what's the similarity between socialism and the mice that die when they get in the rat trap? Is that both the people that follow socialism and the mice don't understand <laughs> uh, where the cheese comes from? Like they don't get what that is. They just think it's amazing. It's a reward. No, no. First of all, the cheese here is us. We're we work for that. Everything they give you, they're not they're not creating wealth for you. They're taking your wealth. But people see it as a gift. Oh, the government gave me X amount of dollars because of uh, this program. Yeah, they took it from somewhere. Well, what do you think? I don't understand why they think it's just magic money. That's why nothing works. That's why our dollar's worth worthless. That's why groceries are $16 for grapes. You know how crazy that is? Now that you mentioned it, I, I had a joke. I don't know if you could see this. The, the, you know, I, oh, I you have 14 cents American? I don't know. Well, I don't know if this is <laughs> fake because it's it's like literally dissolving, but I saw something metaphoric in this that the bill is literally dissolving like that picture out of uh, Back to the Future 1. Yeah. Can you well, rip it? Uh, yeah, I don't no, don't rip it. No, no. Well, it's illegal. Don't yeah, rip it. Well, I don't, I don't want to give many excuses. Yeah. Um, it, it is it is wild. I, tell I mean, I haven't been here in a while now. Doctors, hospitals. I mean, touch wood, poop can in a whore. You don't need to go. You yeah. have a GP? No. Nope. Most people what, don't. What's, what's the wait time to get a GP? Two years, I think now. Or uh, wait for like a uh, a, like get a, your own a, doctor. a family doctor. doctor. Oh, the wait two is years long. if you're lucky. Yeah, yeah, the wait is long. Okay, and the hospitals. Still, oh, still, still overwhelmed. Problems. Still overwhelmed. And we're not in COVID anymore. We're no, and they promised us that that was the first thing they're going to take care of after COVID. The hospitals in Quebec have been in the same condition for 20 years, I think. So a lot of Quebecers bring that up. They go, you blamed COVID, but we've had this problem for years. Now it's post-COVID and we don't... What does it say, Poseidon? So 279 days for patients with urgent health care problems. If you have urgent, <laughs> you'll, you'll wait a year. <laughs> And 619 days for people in good health. 619 days is damn near two years. And by the way... You're the problem for complaining. If you have an emergency, I think now it's three days, two to three days. Oh, the emergency room is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just live there. Do you want to tell him what I had to pull before I went on vacation? So he was nervous because he he felt his heart. But anyways, his real doctor, which is me, 
I had already <laughs> diagnosed him and I told him, what did I thought? I had told him exactly. Yeah, I had trained a little too hard and my muscle he, was pinching. He pinched the muscle. And I was telling him this. This was even on camera. Like I told him this. I'm not a doctor, but I could tell with all his symptoms. He didn't want to listen to me. He's like, I'm like, oh, he's freaking out. Yeah, but it's the heart. And I go, so. If you go, no, it was next to your heart. Well, you, you, you need to get, first of all, just get a blood pressure machine and uh, a heart rate monitor. But I told him, if you go, so you don't wait there for three days, you got to pretend you're having a heart attack. So I told him, fake having a heart attack. <laughs> So he went in there. He's like, I'm not waiting for And he started faking having a heart attack. <laughs> and now the thing is, here's the best part about him faking it. Still, is that they still didn't see him. <laughs> they saw him. But then after a while, people start to realize, they're like, wait a second. He said he can't raise his arm. Now he's raising his arm. We're, we're giving him ultrasounds. <laughs> we're giving all this. They, but it was too late. By the time they realized that he was faking it, he realized there was nothing wrong with him. So he's like, all right, well, I guess I'm done here. <laughs> they had done all the tests, x-rays, ultrasounds, heart monitors uh, thing. They hooked me up to machine blood tests. A urine test, everything. It's in three hours, in and out. In and out. In and out. While people are dying in the emergency room, this guy fucking lied his way for nothing. Well, did, did all he had was a tear, a muscle tear. Like it has nothing to do with your heart. He's like, that's what my. Yeah, he's the, like, that's what my buddy told me. The X-rays revealed a uh, muscle tear. Like it was. A, oh, shut up! You took an X-ray and it revealed that there was a muscle tear. Yeah, yeah. X-ray, ultrasound, whatever it was. Exactly what yeah. I told him. I told him yeah. the day before. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Uh, did they offer you maids while you were in there? <laughs> Maids, medical uh, assistance in dying. Oh no, no, it, it, is, it is. I mean, I, I make I it a joke. My clip has gone viral on that on Instagram. It's like two million views wait, wait, or whatever. Which clip? Where I'm talking about it. When I, I bring up the lady, the Paralympian. Yeah. Who they offered her? She's like, K -K I would need a wheelchair ramp in my in front of my building. Like, wouldn't you rather just kill yourself? So yeah. I talked about it, and then people were. Some people comment. It's the craziest thing. Some people think, look, this is the result of capitalism, which is the that's the op this the, is the opposite. It's the result of socialism. Yeah, it's they're, the opposite of capitalism. Other people are like, uh, well, we don't know. Maybe that'll help. Like, no one values human life anymore. There's no human decency. So, nothing. Sorry, I'm going to interfere here. Uh, no I love the, new, there's a new term online uh, that people are throwing around a little too loosely. They're calling it late stage capitalism. The hell does that? I mean, I, I would go with the term crony capitalism, which is a term I've heard, which I think is more aptly yep. descriptive of the world in which we live. I'm with you. Which is corrupt capitalism. Yeah. It's, it's corporations now influencing government and they're all working together. It's, it's a funny thing, like crony capitalism sounds a lot like fascism to some extent. Capitalist fascism. It, it's not capitalism in the true form. No, it's not a free market at all. It's manipulated. No, but, but certainly the issues about the healthcare system... It's socialized healthcare that's the problem. They're, they're, now, I, I've been in the States. I had to go to the hospital one time. And I had a partial, what I think was this partial stomach blockage. Like I thought I was dying. Not a heart attack. It's just like my stomach was going to explode. Um, I, was, I was seen within minutes. Stop bragging. Treated. No, well, I'll tell you, there's, there's a punchline to it. Um, treated perfectly. And I had to get out of there. Like They, they gave me some sort of, not heroin-like drug, but something that relaxes the muscles. And the, they, they did it. And everything just Xanax. No, no, it was it was an injection. It was an injection. Oh, okay. Um, and I felt it. I mean, I understand why people do these things. I, I just didn't like the way it made me feel. But everything relaxed, and then everything just sort of passed. And then the, I said, like, now I got to get the hell out of here because I'm not staying in a hospital. I'm still getting bills. Like that that that's the issue. It didn't the money. cost like five. It cost like a few, couple thousand bucks. I, that was with insurance. And um, and I still keep getting these effing bills, like. 50 bucks here and 100 bucks there. And I don't even know what it is anymore. Then you get like a collection notice for a $3 a, a, a surcharge, whatever. Um, so, I mean, that's the issue. You pay for it. But you pay for it when you use it in the States versus paying for it despite not using it here and then it not being there when you need it because it's shit. That's what, what my, uh, that was always my argument. If I'm going to pay for it all the time, when I need it, I hope it works. But they don't give... So if you talk to nurses here, to the nurses, I don't know how the nurses are not... I, I know why they're not going on strike because they're dealing with human lives. But what the nurses go through just in Montreal is crazy. It, Everything's it, on uh, their uh, shoulders. Elaborate, because I mean, I know... Dude, they're, they're, they're understaffed, okay? They're, they're underfunded, so they don't even have the equipment or the people they need. And everything falls on the nurses. Like, even the doctors, right? The doctors are running out. There's not enough doctors. But it's mostly... People uh, talk about nurses as if they're like... Um, I don't know, like maids or whatever. Nurses are the ones that perform most. Of, they, they know every. They're the ones that remember all this shit. They're the ones that are doing the blood tests. They're the ones that are injecting people. They're, they're running around trying their best, and there's not enough of them. There's too many people. There's not enough money. They don't have all the equipment they need. So these people are fucking losing their mind. Now, obviously, you, there's still shit nurses that were doing TikToks while people were dying. But that's, you know, minor, minor, it's not everyone. But the majority of nurses here, they're, they're fucking... No, they're, it, it was they like don't get the thank you monetarily or even socially. And they're just running around. They're the ones ru keeping the hospitals alive. No, they, 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 I was talking with the nurses at the Montreal Super Hospital before we left and understaffed, overworked, 
uh, I won't say shitty conditions because I don't want to be judgmental, but what they described as atrocious working conditions. Mm -hmm. And it's no, it's no one to, then they end up leaving, take their skills and go elsewhere where they get paid more. And I then get it. the system breaks down. Yeah. It's no, but the, the, it, there's trade-offs to, you know, quote Sowell and, and here you're paying it's, if it's 25 to 50 cents of every tax dollar goes to the healthcare system, whether you use it or not. And then by the time you need it, you end up dying in an ER, at least in the States, in theory, save your money, get proper insurance. And if you need it, then you pay for it because you've saved up at the time. But obviously the issue is people don't save up and they don't get insurance. And then when they go to the hospital, they're even more screwed in the States where if you don't have insurance, you can get screwed and insurance costs a, a small arm and a leg, still less, I think. Dollar for dollar, less than what you pay in taxes in Canada. It might be because they take half your paycheck. Yeah, it's, it's, they take, I mean, let's just say it's like, it'll be a good thirteen to 15,000 bucks a year, depending on the size of your family. That's a lot. You pay, if you, you make 100,000 in Canada, 30,000 is going to the healthcare system. I would say between 25 and 50. I don't think it really goes to healthcare. I think they say that, but if it did, the system would be better. I feel like no, they're not go, even telling us. Waste. It's yeah, just, I feel it's like they're not telling us where this money goes. Like the, the tax dollars, because we're given so much money, nothing works. I don't know where the fuck it goes. It's wild. It's it, no, but it's it's atrocious. And then at the same time, pushing medical assistance in dying, euthanasia, mercy killings on people who are not terminally ill, while then also pushing new laws that are going to you know be, make for presumed harvest uh, organ harvesting in New Brunswick and Nova Scotia. It's hard not to see this as. Hey, what about the bug eating? My buddy Josh Shapiro is also a comedian. He does this podcast with me a lot. He sent me a video on TikTok. There's an influencer. Uh, in the States, this kid, and for some reason, he goes, I think that they're paying him to do this. He's just started doing videos of cicadas, There's a lot of cicadas. He's like, you could eat these. And he doesn't even like them, but he's promoting videos of eating bugs. What? Well, I was doing this before it was cool. Back when at the uh, Jean Talon Market, there's a Mexican restaurant and it has uh, dried crickets and dried grasshoppers. They're, they're, it's, no, he's grabbing them off trees. That's disgusting. That is... Not eating them live. Eating them live, and he's complaining about how they piss a lot. He's like, so why are you eating them? That, that's that's uh, the stuff of like Joe Rogan fear factor nightmares about yeah. crunching into a disgusting and then they, they that have squishy like innards and no the, the, the dried crickets they, they taste like chips and I'll eat it of my own volition but uh, let's see who this is crazy birthday oh, yeah, click on that one it's this guy I think so eating cricket oh eating cicadas and uh, Josh told me he has like multiple videos he was describing everything to me yesterday well I mean I, I have no doubt everything is hey a no. Cicada cereal. Bro, go fuck yourself. What is this? What is this? We got to put... Hold on. Not that we want to support TikTok, but let's... Now, the, the the rest of the world can see this as we're doing this? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those are alive. Yeah, I'm not going to... First of all, I, I, where does he... I, I, this is a lie, because where does he even get cicadas like that? I mean, I saw a video of him chasing them off trees. Like, wherever he is in the States, there's a lot of cicadas right now. Oh, that's this... Okay, I don't... Poseidon. <laughs> are we going to see this? No, I don't want to... talk. I'm curious. I mean, let's see if he swallows it. Yeah, right. we've, I see we've seen Fear Factor. I mean, I he's eating no, no. disgusting bugs. I want to see his but, facial expression. Oh, he does not. Oh. Yeah, he doesn't even enjoy it. Nobody can enjoy oh. that. It's like eating broken chips and sticks with dirt in it. Okay, well, that's fine. Oh, he's oh, going to okay. vomit. Fuck this guy. Uh, no, but it's uh, no, nobody's going to convince me that this is not part and parcel of a of a grand. It plan. is right. It, it, it can't not be. Who is the jackass from the Liberal Party that I saw on Twitter today, talking about free con free contraception for women because birth control is a right? And regardless of how you feel about that, hold on. A second. I have a question about free con uh, uh, contraception. What do they mean? Like you could just go buy it. Like are we stopped from? Like are we it, talking about condoms and no, the, the pill? We're, we're, talking, yeah, we're, talking, we're talking about condoms and the pill. And I asked my wife, I was like, how much was the pill? A month, and it was like oh, 20, 40 bucks. I'm like, can you imagine we live in a country where they want to give you, the, the, their claim to fame of sense. a successful government is giving you free birth control, which is going to have population issues. Like, instead, you know, but we already have a population issue. That's why that, yeah. we, we, we did mass immigration, and now that doesn't work. There's so many problems. It, none of this makes That's why it, it feels like children are running. The, it, it looks like they're trying to get votes. So it, it feels like they're, they're in a room, and someone's like, yo, you know what I wish? I wish someone would pay for my condoms. And then they're like, Steve, that's a great fucking idea. And no, just, it, 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 none it of this is, makes any sense. It will make sense. You, you've, have we ever talked about, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've mentioned it many times, Parkinson's Law of Mundanity. No, tell okay, me so this. It's not Parkinson, the guy who, I don't think it has anything to do with the shaking disease. He was an economist and he had a bunch of theories. Parkinson's Law of Mundanity, Parkinson's Law of Triviality. And I forget which one it is, but 
it's the idea that, you know, you can spend all day talking about the easiest thing to solve because it's the easiest thing to talk about. And so everybody's going to have an opinion. Oh, yeah, let's pay free tampons. That's great. We'll put tampons in. All right, because that, that's an easy, stupid fix for a problem that doesn't exist. Yeah. Talk about how to make Canadians more wealthy. Well, that's more complicated. Nobody has an opinion. So it's easy for small-minded people, idiots, dumb people, to say, yeah, okay, well, tampons. Easy solution. Now we can go run to TikTok and Twitter and say we've given free tampons in women's bathrooms. What does that even mean we've given free ta tampons? don't cost $900. Well, first of all, they're How not... How about you stop taxing people so they have enough money to buy their own tampons? That's what, that's what my wife... My Marion, my wife has been, not black pill, but certainly red pill. She's like, all right, give me a tax credit. Like, yeah. oh, I, don't, I don't want you to pick my tampons, first stop of all. Stop taking my money. And she said, oh, who's the guy? Poseidon, if you can find this one, I put out a tweet to him. And I said, did you just invite girls into your bathroom? He's a liberal guy. And uh, it would be a tweet and it says, we're going to have a problem type thing. This is a guy, uh, 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 not that it makes a difference that he's a white male, but it's a white male sitting down saying, we're giving out free tampons. And if any of you ladies want some, come to my office and we have free tampons, uh, free, uh, yeah, free uh, women's, women's stuff in our bathroom. I was like, Okay. Did you just invite women into your bathroom? Okay, that's hey. that's weird, but also this is private what's his, shit. What's his name? What do you mean invite? Uh, I'm not people? gonna remember what his name is. Why are we going? Are we pretending that women are retarded and they can't think for themselves? I don't understand oh, no, what this sure. is. The, the, Come to me so I can give you because they don't know how to no, buy fucking it's, tampons. It's, it's a sign. Of, it's a sign of their progressivism. It's and, regress. And then my wife Marion says like. What tampons are they using? Where are they made? Yeah. Are, they, are they using the same cheap made in China tampons as the masks that they were forcing on kindergartners during COVID? That's oh, fine. we're going to find out. They, they leave little traces of graphene up our yayus. Um, but it's, it's like, it's the stupidest thing on earth because it's such a dumb, small fix to a problem that doesn't exist but gives them a talking point. And then you're how much could tampons cost? I don't know, but when the government gets involved, I guarantee you they're going to cost three times as much. Yeah. Who gets the contract? Where's the money going? Where's it coming from? Wait, Can how much do tampons cost? 20 bucks? I don't know. 20, condoms are not uh, particularly cheap. but I don't know. Like a, Condoms are around 20 bucks, too. Depends tampons. what you want to get. Hold on. But 20 bucks for The condoms are like $1.50 each. Not that I know. It sounds like you do. Well, I'm, we don't... I'm, okay, uh, it's $16 for a pack of 64. Oh, I thought it was like $800 the way they make it seem. <laughs> No, that's that's like it's great. So if Canadians you would just reduce so tax by one percent, uh, the ladies can buy all the tampons they want and make it a tax deductible expense. I think it is a deductible expense in certain states, but no, it's so. It shouldn't outrageous. even be tax deductible. Just don't tax me. I'll let me buy whatever the fuck I want. I'll, I'll let the economy roll. It, it's it's celebrating the uh, the Stupidity. financial the financial crippledness of the country. Women are so poor. Canadian women are so poor they can't afford tampons. We'll give them to you for free. Except the administrative costs, like the the, the, the Vegas casino house, yeah. taking your money, spinning it around their internal stuff, paying all their employees to give these things away for free. It's it's government waste. It's and it's it's insulting too. Well, right. I'm glad we're saving money though, because we could do a lot more rainbow crosswalks with the money that we're saving. It's can you okay, so just add them all up. Promoting abortion in Canada. Are we How promoting are, it? Are there commercials? Oh, Justin Trudeau's like after the after the Dobbs decision that overturned Roe v. Wade, Canada's always gonna be a safe place for abortion. Canada, the only country in the world. That has no criminal prohibitions on abortion at any stage of proceed at any That's stage. That's not of true. It is. Fact check that, Poseidon. You can abort a kid at like nine months. In theory, well, you there is no criminal prohibition for abortion at any stage of pregnancy in Canada, but you will not find a doctor to do it after I think it's twenty four weeks. Okay, okay, but it is. But there's weird. no. It is. So the if you only do country. find a doctor, you could basically kill an almost newborn. That is the that is the That's not the, the logical absurd. That is the necessary conclusion that there's no criminal prohibition for it. Check that. It's gonna. It'll, it'll, it's. it's we, I think we're the only. They say the only nation in the world with no criminal prohibitions on abortion at any stage of pregnancy. I thought you're supposed. But isn't it dangerous for women if you're getting like an eight month abortion? Like isn't it? It's, it gets more dangerous in all respects. I mean, I can. I, I have difficulty imagining. Here we go. Abortion has remained legal throughout Canada since 1988. Uh, because no law has replaced it. Abortion has remained legal throughout Canada since 1988. That's not the right one. But if you put in Canada, only nation in the world with no criminal prohibition. So what's the timeline for when it's safe? Like the first uh, well, three months, it, the first it's, month? It's, what, what? It's, I mean, I don't, look, I'm no, no doctor, but I know that it gets, it obviously gets more complicated the more, I know this, the obviously, bigger the mass. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, they have the, uh, the, the, the abortion pills. The which, morning after pill, but that's limited. No, that that you could the only... morning after pill, from what I uh, understand, is a few days. But then yeah. you have what they uh, just had a decision out of, the, out of America. While some restrictions exist, Canada is one of the nations with no criminal restrictions on abortion. It's the one that they just had the decision out in America, methiprazone, which is abortion not the Abortion in Canada is legal throughout pregnancy. But pregnancy is nine months. Yeah, no, no, yeah. That's, it's, that's, 
It's the but reality. That's dangerous, And no? it's publicly funded as a medical procedure under the combined effects of the federal Canada Health Well, Act. it is a medical procedure. Obviously, it's not a fucking... You're not going to the gym. But I mean, yeah, I think like after three months, it starts like the... the it's like exponential, the dangers. Well, yeah, there's, there's no question about that. And I don't know how methiprazone works. That's the drug that the FDA approved bypassing its ordinary uh, process. And there was a, a Supreme Court decision that basically said the plaintiffs had no standing to sue uh, or to cause, to compel the FDA to withdraw its approval for methiprazone. And that's the one that basically causes like, if I understand it correctly, and I might get chewed up in the chat for not getting it right, but it, it like causes a disturbance and then it causes your body to reject what might've already attached to the uterus lining. And it's an, it, it was a secondary use of a drug and it's not safe. And there's some issues with it, but um, that's what a lot of people use when they discover they're pregnant later on. Uh, later stage of the pregnancy. So what should we be doing to avoid, uh, I don't know, maybe they should, technology to figure out if you're pregnant sooner? Well, so I mean, they, tip, typically, you'll know if you might be pregnant if you've been having sex. The the, the issues that... I, but there are condoms that break. There are, I've heard yeah, stories you, of people with... I've heard stories of people with IUDs. Well, that, IUDs that sometimes... Gets knocked around and gets you still get... But I, without getting into not my, not my Marion's history, but uh, IUDs don't always work. Um, You're telling me Condoms do break And when they break yeah. You know it Unless if there's a leak What you should be doing After each intercourse Is making sure That there are no leaks In yes. the condom I once had a broken condom That I didn't notice Until right I was like what the fuck like, But we're talking about It exploded <laughs> Ha! Well, yeah. but you realize at some point because if you stop having sex and then you see that there's no condom. Yeah, yeah that's little, when I re- that's when I realized. Luckily, nothing happened. But then, but then but you it can, was still. Uh, oh, you, you can get scared, but then you have the morning after pill. I think within I think it's like what, 72 hours from the procreation, it'll cause the uh, the egg not to even embed or. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, you can't keep taking the morning after, but that sounds good for women. That's it's fucking not, dangerous. I, believe, I'm, I don't believe it's good for you. That's either. like forcing you to. Yeah, that's but not. But no, it's, it would be the the idea would be um, you know to say. Choose when and with whom you're having sex and how you're doing it. And in the infinitely unlikely case that you realize early on that you're you're pregnant and for whatever the reason, okay. Um, but the issue and the, the, the push it, pushing it as something that my body, my choice at any time. I think most people can agree. You know, seventh month plus. The, I don't, can't imagine an example or a situation in which case it would be okay. You know, the mother's life. But that's no longer your body, your choice. That's someone else. At yeah, that point. I, so, I can't even. But understand. I can't. I. But here's the thing. I feel like we're talking extremes because I personally, I don't know anyone or haven't heard a case of that late. Because they, I remember in New York they were talking about now you could do it. You could crush a skull or whatever at close to nine yeah, months. You, saw, you, you that saw, saw that. You saw that video. So that's a murder, basically. That you're just oh. murdering a kid. But I haven't seen or heard of anyone actually doing that. Like you have to be a real stupid person to be like, wait, I'm gonna abort this baby, eight months in. I, wonder, like I haven't I do, heard of it yet as well. I know I do wonder if, you know, given the system here, if there are substantial delays that might even not allow you to procure it, even if you detect it early, and then you're forced to wait like two or three months. I don't know. But I don't know. I don't but, know. No, I don't, that's why I think they won't. I don't think a doctor here is going to be like, yeah, the only me, time oh. doctors after 24 weeks will allow it is if the if the mother is at risk of dying. Which makes sense. Or the the the, the fetus is uh, going to come out, you know. Yeah, and then, but there are, there are there are people who agree or disagree. You can understand the rationale. Say it's God's will, and yeah, yeah. I those are not the uh, the broadest consensus on either end of the extreme. But I can understand it, even if we disagree, and they will agree to disagree with me. But no. So whole bottom line: promoting abortion, promoting contraception, promoting medical assistance in dying. Uh, being at the helm of a healthcare system that is a death care system in Canada, and then they say, oh, our population is not growing. We need to import 40 million non-Canadians. And by 20, what did they say? 2,100? Double, double the population of Canada. Yeah. And don't call it a great replacement, you racist bigot. Um, it's, it's, it's not happening, but it's yes, good that yes, it's happening. And Canadians have no culture. There is no Canadian culture. I heard him say all that shit. I heard no, it's, 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 it's wild, but you can't but see it for what it is. Like, and then, it is but, weird. And then administer uh, this jibby-jab mandatory uh, experimental... Uh, well, the, I think we're agreeing now it's gene therapy. I think by definition it is gene it's, it's gene therapy. Yeah. I was uh, right. No, they, 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 it's not gene therapy, but it, you know, there's some, it, it modifies your genes to some extent. It's, it's so stupid. The, the fact checks deny and then admit later on. You put all this together, it's tough not to see a broader plan, whether it's by accident, by organic design, or by malicious design. You can't not see it happening. So what do you think the, the end goal is? It is a one world government. It is depopulation to some extent, redistribution of population to another extent, and basically socializing the globe. Just import and 
destroy nation states so that you can have a one world government, the WHO or however you want to call it. It used to be called the New World Order. And that was a conspiracy theory, not just a great band from the 80s. And now, we're and now that's, that, that's what it is. It's not the NWO. It's the WHO. And it's one world order, one world government. And you got Justin Trudeau, as far as I'm concerned, vying for his seat on that future one world government. He's uh, not going to be able to walk freely in Canada after this. Like people are, they really don't like, I was in Ottawa for three weeks. And I kept seeing in front of Parliament people with like the fuck Trudeau flags and all the people. He, I was talking to regular Ottoans, Ottoans, Ottoanians, Ottoanians, Ottoites, Ottoites, and uh, <laughs> they were they were not happy. He, people that work for him, actually, that I met that work in the government for him, hated him. Well, I, I, look, I'm convinced everybody hates him, even those in his orbit. But there are people who are dependent on him, and so you, you can hate him all you want, but he signs your paycheck, yeah. and that's how you get control over a country. Poseidon, what is it? Twenty percent of the Canadian workforce works for the federal government, federal which is a, a crazy it's what? Just, yeah, go, Google the percentage of uh, Canadian labor force that's no. federally employed. That's why we're not productive. We're not a productive nation. Well, no it, one's creating it. That, but that's how you get your population held captive, where they can't even defy you because you will, they will, you will cut. He, he will cut their paychecks off, and they'll they'll be without work, without pay. What do we got here? So. It's in the unit of thousands, so it's what, uh, 20 million? Poseidon, this, here's what we're going to need. We're going to need Patrick Bed David to start a new <laughs> department, and we're going to go work for <laughs> Valuetainment. No, but it is, it is wild. It's how you capture a society. Um, yeah, 20.6 million. So basically, you're telling me 5 million of those people are, are in government? Damn. The force no, group four, 4 million, about 3.5 million, yeah. It's, it's, and I think that's directly, I'm not, and not indirectly. But it, it, it's um, it is weird. He's he is a he's a loathsome human. Like I I I, it's not with pride that I say this. It's it's just it might be with with a, a sorrow. I he's an awful human. He's one of the people where I think he's probably more evil in real life than I even think he is from the internet. But I you know his brother Kyle Kemper, I had him on the channel. His his actual is his half brother. That's the guy who did the Tucker Carlson interview. Uh, shoot, yeah, I think he did. Did he do a Tucker Carlson? Yeah, he did a Tucker Carlson. He, he looks like, when we look the same, except he's about a foot taller yeah, than me. Yeah, that guy, that guy. Um, what did he tell you? He's the nicest guy on earth. Like, he's a, he's a grassroots, sort of like a fish-loving hippie dude. Yeah, he doesn't look like that. Anymore. He looks more like the guy on the, he's on the left now, not, not the clean-shaven guy. There he is. Uh, like, like, polar opposite. A, a, a human of a human. And it's, like, it's, it's, it's very bizarre. And then I, I asked him when he was on the channel, I was like, has your brother always been like this? He says, no, he hasn't always been like this. It's something new, and, and he doesn't know, you know, he doesn't know what's Oh, he hasn't on. always been like this. No. But we've seen Trudeau hasn't always been like this. Once upon a time, Canadians like guns. Once upon a time, you know, freedom of speech, all, all of the stuff. But you get co-opted. He, I, I think, like, I, I generally think all of these politicians are blackmailed and they're into I mean, you heard it here. Trudeau didn't always suck. He used to also blow. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> no, I, I, I do think it's, um, I, I, I'm convinced these people lead moral, you know, immoral, debaucherous lives, and then they get blackmailed into doing the bidding of the people who have the blackmail on them. There's no question. For me, Trudeau, he's, he's, he's been up to no good, but he's, he's been up to no good that has caused people to be able to exploit him and, and make him do their bidding in a way that he would never... I don't even think it's... Me. I think he just... He's one of those kids that wants to be part of the, the group. I think that's all it is. Like, I want to be friends with uh, Klaus Oh, like, the, like the, 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 the elites. Yeah, probably. I mean, that, but that also gets exacerbated in life, especially when you lose touch and you lose connection with... The people, I would say, the people that matter. Yeah. A, the, the the people with a capital P, but also the people that you were elected to represent. Once they hate you, the only the only consolation you have is they're idiots for hating me, and these elitists who say it's good that they hate you are my friends, and they're all they're all a bunch of evil scoundrels. I wonder what's going to happen here if we're going to be able to force uh, an election quicker than what he wants, or we're going to have to wait till twenty twenty. I don't think so. I mean, J Jugmeet uh, has has made his bed of, of hypocrisy that it's so bad. I mean, he gets up there the other day and. Lame railing against the liberals and their hypocrites and their and their and their scoundrels. All right, let's go. Yeah, but election. no, but no, he needs his pension because know. this guy knows he's he's now too far gone. There's no redemption for for Jugmeet Singh anymore, and so he's got to go. He's got to get his pension. Call an election. Well, it'll happen in 2025. He'll be secure for life, but he'll be hated for life as well as he should be. But we're going to be giving him 150 G's a year to live his life. It's crazy. That's crazy. You know, I mean, and, and, that, and then it goes. You know, I think it, it does uh, get adjusted for inflation, right? Because that won't be worth jack shit in in 10 years. It's, um, no, but what's the other scandal? The scandal that we haven't really seen anything about in a little while, the Chinese infiltration, Chinese and Indian oh, yeah. infiltration. yeah, what happened with that? Yeah. We, 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 the headlines went nuts three weeks ago, four weeks ago, and now radio silence. No, no jug meets talking they, about And they it. don't want to talk about who was compromised. They, they don't want to disclose which politicians were wittingly 
participating in foreign interference in Canadian politics, wittingly. I mean, it's 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 not treason. I wonder how the Indians scammed uh, the. They asked them for Google Play gift cards. <laughs> No, it's, it's, I mean, you, it's, it's, I don't know what the exact scheme of it was. I was going to have a, um, I should probably still do it, have a, a report from Blacklocks on talk about it. But I, I mean, I don't know that we know anything more than what everybody already knows because it's, it's heavily redacted. It's, you know, uh, national security uh, censored. But they're allowed to work, these people. You know, they're, 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 still in, they're still in government. Not, I, I can't drink the Tim Hortons stuff. Tim Hortons is, uh, it's not what it once was. No, I don't. Water. Is it because um, there's no sugar? No, I think it's just because the coffee tastes like watered down. It's no longer it's coffee. It's mostly water. It tastes like tea. Mm. Mm. I feel you. But no, the, the national security issues, and they won't reveal the names of the Canadian politicians who are currently serving in the government, who wittingly participated in foreign, ele- foreign interference in Canadian politics. How, what, what sense does that make? They should be under arrest, and they should be in yeah. jail, or at least being, you know... We'd get arrested for less. We, we, people have been, people have been arrested. The other side has been arrested for nothing, detained for years for nothing. So you get all that. Um, the country, I, like, I don't know. The country feels like it's in its death throes. And I, I don't know what happens. Like you get, the, you get the conservatives in power. Okay, good. There's only one thing that, I don't care who's in power, there's only one thing that needs to be done right now. Uh, we need to cut taxes right away. Start reducing uh, government. But you, but you go see, find a real fucking job. But you, you, how do you do that? How do you get elected when the unions are your, you know, among your biggest supporters? And you're saying, yeah, I'm going to get elected by putting you out of work. Go back to the private sphere, you lazy bastard, and find a job that actually and then, contributes. And then, you, not only that, you're going to make more money. You just have to actually yeah, but work. You, you, the problem is, once you've conditioned people to be dependent on you, they don't believe it, and they don't even see how it's possible. It's, it's like, to some extent, it's like how uh, law firms capture young lawyers. You'll never make it on your own. You need us to give it, you know, we'll give you a good love, a good living, 100,000, whatever, 120 a year. You won't be able to do it on your own. You don't have the infrastructure. You don't have the skills. Stay with us. And then by the time you get a mortgage, by the time you get a car, by the time you have a kid or two, you're stuck. In. You're stuck. You can't go it on your own and take that chance. Um, and those that do, you realize, holy shit, you know, if I work hard, I'm not guaranteed, but I'm maximizing my odds. In the same thing with the private sphere. They're dependent on the government and they're conditioned to believe they can't succeed and they can't live on their own. They need big Justin Trudeau, big François Legault to pay them, to give them their money that they take from other people who, who actually contribute to the, you know, from the private sector. And it's, it's how you capture a, a, an electorate. And I don't know how you get elected on the basis of saying we're going to shrink government, put you out of work, and make you go into the private sector. You need the kids to understand what the truth is so that the next generation gets it. But right now there's like a 50-50. There's some young people that I speak to that get it. And others, they're super indoctrinated. They go, no, you need the government to take care of everything. The government should be paying it, for my this. But the government should be... It's like, why don't you work? It, I never understood how people think... Let me refresh this here. How people don't trust private enterprise because people are corrupt and they have corrupt interests and they'll... But they trust the government. Yeah, but they trust the government. Which is not run by people. No, and, and not, they trust the government in the face of a, a history from day one of corruption, abuse... Uh, you know, human rights violations and all the stuff, but they trust them now because they must be very different now. It's it's uh, Stockholm syndrome to some extent. It, that's what it is. That's what I'm telling. That's what's happening with a lot of uh, socialist countries. That's what's going on. People and the not wanting to work thing bothers me. I just want to create. I want to. I took all the risk when I did everything I'm doing. Uh, but the government wants to reap the rewards. If I make money, they're there. They got to take half of it. If I lose money, they're like, all right, shut down. Fuck you. No, they're going to tax on capital gains, but I mean, I guess you get to claim capital losses if you can offset them, but it's um, people who don't live, like you, I moved, so I'm in Florida, still paying a sh- shit ton of taxes because federal really taxes you up the wazoo, even though there's no state income tax. And it's, I'd say like 13% better, 14% better. I'm not at the maximal um, tax, well, tax structure, but it doesn't matter. Um, you, you realize what difference that makes, but people down there don't understand the degree you are taxed. I mean, you pay more than 50% tax because if you're making more than 80, because it's 40 some odd percent on your income, then you got 15% sales tax. Then you got, you know, property tax, home insurance, pa- tax. passport fees, license fees. I, I went to buy a, a fishing license. I bought a fishing license government and I'm a non-resident. A hundred bucks, 92 bucks for a fishing license so I can fish for bass that I don't even, you know, have any interest in keeping. Uh, residents pay 30 some odd bucks. There's just tax tech, disguise tax everywhere. You get a corporate license plate or a company yeah. car, 300 bucks a year, renewable every year. It's just indirect disguise taxes. Yeah. And what do they do with your money? They fucking piss it away. They give it to foreign countries and uh, they finance, you know, international conflict. Yep. And they expect you to be happy about it. Yeah. The, you want me to be happy about kids getting bombed? No. It's, it's like, and again, like, pe- people think I'm a, 
they call me all sorts of names. I get called, you know, a Zionist, Mossad, and a Nazi in the same day. Really? Oh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's wild. Um, you just, everyone sees a Jew, and at least some people see Jew, and that's all they can think. I know for a fact that Viva hates Jews. He's mentioned <laughs> it on many occasions. I, He's joined I, these various groups. I know, the thing is, like, I, get, I get called a self-hating Jew because I... I when you I, criticize. Well, I also, I understand some people's criticism. When people... People say I Jew- get it. I'm tired of you guys controlling the media and the weather. Well, That's and been people, bothering me. People say Jews control the media, Jews control politics, Jews control Hollywood. And I was like, all Jews right. do control Hollywood. Well, first of all, it, it, it's the same. It's not happening, but it's good that it is. Mm. Jews don't control Hollywood, but there's a damn good reason historically why Jews su- succeeded in Hollywood. I'll tell you why, because they weren't allowed to do other jobs. So they got into the vaudevillian and they into, I know, I'm a history guy. No, well, I didn't I'm know that, this. you know, I, I learned through on Jeremy that Jews also have a very... Um, Notable presence, a statistically uh, disproportionate presence in pornography as well. Yep. Um, Entertainment in general, but a lot of it stems from the years where people didn't want Jews around in any other field. So they created their own entertainment sphere. And then it was good. But it happens with a lot of groups in different fields. It's just that because media expanded and so big, you're going to notice the demographic. Because there's a lot in media and music and all that. You're going to notice at the top more Jews because for all those years... That's the spheres they went into. That and jewelry. Big, big well, Jews and Arabs, big uh, well, in uh, the diamonds. It's, there's no question. And then the, the issue is it, people call you an anti-Semite for noticing it. And they yeah. say, okay, it's not happening, but there's a good reason that it is. And then they'll say, all right, it might be true, but it's not Jews in the name of Judaism. It's just people who happen to be Jewish. And then yeah. you say, okay, fine. We can agree on that. Yeah. But then don't tell me I'm wrong for noticing it. And then you say, okay, they don't control it, but they have statistically uh, disproportionate overrepresentation in it. All right, fine. Big banks, you can you can take like uh, CEOs of big banks. They're not yeah. Jewish. Okay, there is statistical overrepresentation that you can't deny and that you get called names for noticing. Yeah, it's I, true. I, 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 d- d- well, it's like Greeks and restaurants. We don't control the restaurant in just industry. But, but like over 80% of Montreal restaurants, even if they're Japanese or Italian, are owned by Greeks. But the, That's a real thing. There's a, there's a reason for it. It was because of which Greeks came to Canada. Yeah, it's 100%. And, why, and yeah. um, I was having a discussion with someone who said, <laughs> uh, did you know the first impeachment of Trump? They, it was dubbed the Jew coup. No, I never okay. heard of Jew coup. Wait, <laughs> if you, what? If you, it was called the Jew coup, like J-E-W-C-O-U, like a Jew coup. Mm. Um, uh, not a coup, but like a, a coup, a, a military coup. coup. Yeah, yeah. Um, because a, a, a statistically significant, or I should say statistical overrepresentation of players involved were Jewish. You can go with the lawyers. I mean, people you wouldn't even know were Jewish, like Vinman, well, the, the, the main, the main complainant. There's Jewish lawyers. Oh, there's a few of them. Oh. And a few Jewish accountants and a few Jewish politicians. Get the fuck out of here. Um, I was talking about uh, recently the lawfare against Trump. And like you say, like, People are going to come to conclusions because the brain makes these connections and the state of America. And they say, well, Jews don't control American politics. Okay, fine. They do heavily influence them, though. And and then you say that, and then you realize, okay, like, but for the fact that some of these politicians complained about anti Semitism as the basis for the critiques against them, I would have never known they were Jewish. Merrick Garland, you know, who's in charge of the DOJ. Jewish. I never would have known it, except he said it was anti-Semitic to criticize him, or at least some of the criticism against him was anti-Semitic. Alejandro Mayorkas. Did you know that he's Jewish? No. Okay. I didn't know it either until he was having congressional hearings and then complained about anti-Semitism when he was being uh, lambasted for leaving the border open. Uh, Then you you go to the lawfare against Trump and you have E. Jean Carroll, Kaplan, her lawyer, Judge Engeron, uh, wait, hold on. Which one's the one? In, which one's the nipple judge? No, nipple judge is in the Leticia James case. Are, he, are you here to tell me that Kanye West was right? Is that what you're fucking? <laughs> did you come <laughs> on this goddamn podcast? <laughs> what I'm what, what I'm saying is that uh, you see you, why you, people you, you get can't, upset. You can't fault Kanye West for feeling the way he's feeling. Mm. Period. And then it's like, well, that now you're sympathizing with. Like, you, you don't defeat the arguments by branding the person whatever name. You have to then say, okay, fine. You're you, the, the steel man the other way around. By the way, I didn't even get to the end of it. Like, E. Jean Carroll. Kaplan, her lawyer. Kaplan, the judge in the E. Jean Carroll case. Then you got New York. All Nipple you're saying judge is that Ingram. Jews complain a lot. That's what you're telling me. Well, no. Well, what I'm actually the the irony is um, that the reflexive crying anti-Semitism when there's legitimate criticism for their professional conduct only exacerbates the problem. Mm, Anyways, I, I had this saying. discussion with someone, and then they're like, "Oh, I, I didn't I didn't realize all of that." It goes even. I mean, so the bottom line: How do we get on this? I'm going to be called. It was a joke about you calling me a self-hating Jew. I don't know how this happened. All I'm well, saying I, is I, your Jewish propaganda is not going unnoticed. <laughs> it's oh, so all that it is. I don't remember how we started on this, but um, how did we? Besides, we have to play the tape. Look, back. I what? will tell you what I, my message is very clear. Stop hating entire groups of people. 
hate individuals. That's what I do. Well, that is that is that is the case. And we're like, even when people talk about statistics in crime and like there's yeah. statistical overrepresentation of certain demographics, like, okay, yeah. how does that impact how you treat that a, a one individual on the street? It shouldn't. And if it does, and then it does, there's a problem. You're the fucking problem. Uh, but but um, the problem also is, and this is what my father brought me up to understand, is when you represent a demographic and you misbehave, yep. like it or not, that's going to be traced to the demographic as a whole, which is why you have to behave in a way that is exemplary to represent that demographic. I have even that if you don't. I, have, I do not want to represent all Greeks. In case of the stupid shit I say or do, I do not want it to be a representation of all Greeks. I th that is that is um, my problem with organized religion is I don't want to be part of this fraternity. I don't want to represent a, a broader, anything broader than myself. I know as a matter of fact and as a matter of human condition that you do. Whether you're I'm white, one of the coolest Greeks. I know this. Do, well, uh, you, you are indeed a cool Allegedly. Greek. Besides, you, you are Albanian. Not I'm Greek. How, I swear to God. He's I Albanian this table. and he's wearing his national shirt today. I'm going to crash a stream. <laughs> Wait, what's I'm going to crash a stream. He doesn't. He doesn't like talking it's, about his family. Well, your skin's your skin's well, not, Greek. not pale Greek. at all. I'm Greek. Yeah, I was joking. It was Albanian versus albino. That was my joke. Oh, oh, I screwed. Uh, this is, a, this is why that's, I don't do stand up. That's good, actually. Yeah. That's a uh, no, but it, that's the reality. Is it, it is the brain makes connections, and it, it it that's how humans have survived. Is by you know, not not all spiders are bad, but I'm not necessarily taking a chance with a an innocuous <laughs> spider. That applies at the human level too. But we're supposed to be smarter than that. Yeah, we're supposed to be smarter than that. If you uh, this is a thing that I told you shocks me in the modern world. Where you're going to make your assessment of someone based on either their skin or their religion. Like, you know what they're thinking. That's fucking crazy because we're so complicated. Every single person thinks differently. So for like us to say, I don't know, uh, Greeks, I don't know, this Greek screwed me over in a business deal. Pantelis is going to do the same thing. I don't even know that guy. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I mean, it, I've, heard, I've heard that quite a bit. Yeah, I personally will well, try. Well, but they, they, I will try to avoid doing business with Greeks. But, obviously, but here's the I've heard that because I'm fucking smart. I've heard that. No, but I, I've heard that about every demographic. I know. Don't do business with the Greeks, yeah, yeah. the Jews, the, you know, the, the, the Middle East. I mean, it, it, yeah. the thing is, humans are humans, and some humans are total shit, and, mm -hmm. and other humans are not. But uh, exactly. No, but the bottom. The, I forget. It was about American politics. I forget how we got into it. But you can't. You can't blame people. Um, for and, you can't, and you can't write people off and not address the ideas, uh, but that's the easiest thing to do. It yeah, I'd rather be... listen to you if you're telling me stuff like that. I'd rather, okay, where's it coming from? And then see if we could rationalize. Yeah, I mean, even the you know who Nick Fuentes is. I know who Nick Fuentes is. Uh, I know him because of the Kanye stuff. But isn't he insane? Isn't he like legitimately he hates Jews and shit? Uh, I think even he would say. Um, I thought he uh, is a real racist. He's not. No, I think he. I think he might. Have, well, I don't. I don't. I mean, yeah. I think the consent. I don't. I can't. I don't know. The I'm not saying because this is. I'm saying what I heard, but this is the media. It could be wrong. This guy could not be. But I. I remember hearing that name, and I know that he's the guy that they go. No, he's like a legitimate like white supremacist. Yeah, I, I mean, I think he might. See, he might answer that question and say, "Yes, I am." Okay. I, I, he was on Alex Jones yesterday, and I'm like, you know, when when you even if you write someone off as what they might be, like. Also, also, I want to know what makes. Well, but the, the other, the most insanely racist, anti-Semitic, whatever bigoted person on earth is sitting right over there. <laughs> no, but yeah. it, it, it it doesn't mean that you that you might not want to interact with them as a human. But it doesn't mean that it could. It depends. Have, it depends on how hardcore they are. Well, no, but no. All that says you may not want to interact with them, but yeah. it doesn't mean that everything they have to say is objectively wrong. But then, uh, yeah, he might have a good recipe for pie. I don't know. But is he one? Is he? Because you know better than you. You're in the sphere. Is it exaggerated or is, is he like a real piece of shit? I, I, I don't watch him re regularly. I, he uh, is unabashed about uh, having a, a, a white ethno, what do we want to call it? Like a white Christian state? state. Yeah. I will say one thing. I do appreciate, even if you have like extreme views, I appreciate when you're honest because then I know who I'm dealing with. What I, what I like uh, less than that is if I don't know. So you're just beating around the bush, and my whole life, like, this is a cool dude. And then I find out he's like, yo, you got to kill these Greeks, or you got to kill these. Well, there, there was, there was, uh, no, he like he he says some hyperbolic things, and I think I think the consensus is that he's quite open about his views. Okay. Um, that you can you know you can have uh you have black countries, you have uh, Jewish countries. Uh, why is it racist or why is it uh, intolerant or impermissible to say we should have a white Christian country? Um, but then he says some other things which are you know. Even worse. Ob 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 I think most people would agree are objectively objectionable, even if there's some, uh, you know, legitimacy to some political philosophy that he might have. He's allowed to say it. It's just it, it, but and then there's others who might just say, um, 
it's a who do say it's a grift and you find your audience and then you have to say the things that placate for sure there's an audience, audience for that i guarantee well, it, you there's, an no, audience there's no question and then it, it, it legit becomes a question of you know what they call audience capture where you you get an audience you've developed it in a certain way and in order to keep them and to grow it and to keep them happy you have to say things that get more and more uh it, it, that satisfy them more and more and mm -hmm. you get captured by your audience and if you find a new audience then you know you, you play the same cycle over and over again yeah my audience goes from love to hate with me that's what I well, I mean, and my audience also is like, it, it, we are conditioned and wrongly so to have like these litmus tests that we apply to humans. And, you know, the. the I like the flow like water. You got to be able to change your idea. If somebody presents a good argument, you got to be able to adapt. I really don't like this whole indoctrination. Indoctrination. This guy said well, this. Or, I or, if, or if like, you know, there are litmus test questions. If you, if you believe in late term abortion, that's going to be a litmus test where we will never agree. And I might make determinations yeah. based on that. But then the flip side, if you believe that, you know, never life at conception and you can't have any, then we, 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 yeah, we all a lot agree of cases. That's what I'm saying. I like the gray area. I'm with you. Well, in some, yes. But that says is, hold on, where was I going with this thought? We got to start a no, that we, that we that we've gotten to the point where like, it's sort of like the, 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 the swiping left, swiping right. If one thing happens that we don't like, we write the person off in their entirety. No, 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 You're no. not going to agree with everything. And there has to be like, really, really like. I don't agree with everything I say. There's stuff that I'll look back and be like, actually now knowing what I know, that's not my stance. Yeah. But anybody saying that, I, write myself off. If someone says I have no problem with abusing dogs, that's a that's a black and white cut that's off. That's a black never, and white never, thing. Never that is, a, yeah, and I'm so, not going to hate all Chinese people, but I don't like that. I don't like that comment. Someone, by the way, <laughs> someone in the chat wrote. Uh, he put one dollar in the chat. He said Fuentes is a fed. Well, oh, so, dude. So by so the that's way, another thing. So I like I like your chat because some of these motherfuckers oh, no, are got, in the know. I got, I got a good there chat. Are, I'm not saying he is, but I'm saying there are some people that I'm convinced are fucking plants. Like I'll see some stuff and I go. You're trying to infiltrate movements. I, well, I have um, I understand that belief. I've actually, I know of the factual bases on which those claims are made. Uh, I just think long and hard. I'm very reluctant before calling someone a fed because it's a, it's a, it's a day. I'm not it saying he is a fed. I'm saying no, it the, happens that people are fed. Well, no, I, and, and I genuinely believe I that I saw January are, 6th. I saw a lot of people that are clearly feds, bro. Well, they're, 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 they're clearly they're, feds. There's people that rely on January 6th and Fuentes' participation in that to argue that he's a fed. Oh, no, no. There's a lot um, of people that participate in that that were not feds, but dude, you see no, some well, videos, I mean, what I mean you're like, that's a fucking fed. People who participated and didn't get punished. That's where people make some conclusions. Ah. But the other the other thing is, um, he could all, like, agent provocateurs also are people who are yep. just, who are operatives to discredit movements. Cause there's some people who are so over the top in what they say, like the guys sitting on the overpasses in Florida who are, I, I believe, you know, the, the, the Nazis and I think clearly feds cause they're designed to try to co-opt and discredit what would otherwise be a, a meaningfully politically influential group. And so you, you, it, this stuff goes back to like op operation COINTELPRO where you, you, you get operatives to get inside and discredit movements to get the teeth out of them and to make them mockable instead of serious movements. And I can the think Nazi of, thing always shocks me, by the way. Every time I see like legit you know, swastika, I always feel like going to talk to them and be like, you realize we fought the Nazis? But, but I, I, I would, like, I would what argue are you like, doing? A, lot of those, a lot of those people- We won, I, what are I, you doing? Well, it, it, Who joins the when, losing when you, side? When you, well, some people- Losers. Are say, some people would, well, I think a lot of those players are operatives and um, they're out there. they're out there to discredit the movement, get, you know, you saw the whole TikTok craze of that woman who dropped the N word, and oh, uh, yeah. the conservative woman. With no, the cross. but you had me at N word. Let's go. Well, it was uh, with the A. It wasn't uh, the hard R. But okay, uh, okay. And, so I don't like her anymore. But. And then, <laughs> well, there were there were people who were legit saying like, "This is another co-opted individual to discredit a conservative movement." Wait, it's she was attacking black people. Like, just she put out a video and it just said something like "broke ass." Mm. Like she's like, oh, a lot of okay, my friends." That's a term, yeah. Well, that's I didn't even know that she was using it to describe. Black people versus just like broke people. Oh, I thought she was talking about broke people in general. No, I, well, I, I, I don't know. How, look, I, okay, I, I, I don't know the broader I don't know. Context. I don't know this broad. But um, your trad wife. And so there's there's a theory that, you know, you, you get or you co-op these people who otherwise had influence in a movement and you corrupt them or you get, you know, actors to come in and then basically act in a way that discredits the movement. And so people don't, you know, will say conservatives now are racist because they follow this chick. Lily Gaddis. Oh, dude, I just followed this broad yesterday. <laughs> Wait a second. I, I DM'd her too. Oh, no, I didn't DM her. Come on. I'm joking. Oh. I didn't know she's dropping N bombs. She did it once and then she did a follow up video. Wait, and click on her Instagram right there. The third. I just want to make sure if it's the same one or if they all have the same oh, don't name. Do, no, no, it's got to be the same one. Yeah, bro. I just followed her Instagram because she was saying crazy shit. But I didn't know she drops the N word. She, dro she thing. dropped it once. It made the news. But no, I, look, I, there's people who think Fuentes is a fed. There's people who think, I, not to drop other names, um, 
you know, the, You're the crazier rate. than I thought. This is insane. Oh, oh, yeah. that's it, so funny. it is. It is wild. The, the canceled conservative creator pipeline. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's. I, I remember that face. Yeah. No, I, I, I've heard. I've heard. Ooh, I've heard the uh, Fuentes being a Fed. I've heard. Well, the, but the, but then you hear that, and I then you hear like Alex Jones is a Fed, and then you Alex hear, Jones like, is not a Fed. I'll tell you that. Yeah, much. and then you hear Alex Jones is uh, Mossad, or you hear he's not Mossad either. Hey man, who, who the hell? Knows? I mean, who knows at any given point in time what it even means? This chick. Oh, I don't yeah, know. This, she was this racist. This was a TikTok. You could uh, play it. Uh, it's just a picture. Hold on, I'm trying. I feel. To find I feel. I feel. I feel bad that she's a racist. Is she racist? No, I don't even know. I gotta watch the video. I don't know if people are exaggerating. I accidentally wrote yik talk. Yeah. Oh, get, <laughs> just don't put in. No, I was gonna make a joke that'll get me canceled as well. But it's Jewish TikTok. Yeah, no, I was gonna yeah. say yid talk will get you. That'll you'll get to another website. Now, oh gosh. What is that? That has to see this. I don't know. If, I don't even know if this That's is a parody a anymore. That's a I challenge anyone to name one single concert. Uh, I don't want to watch this. This is going to make me. Hold on, but it might be funny. She might be making, it might be. Oh, I know her. She's, uh, this is satirical. Hold on. Okay. You, can, you never know these days. I mean, that looks no, satirical. No, no, no. She's, she's, uh, I, I remember her. I like her glasses. <laughs> I like her hair. Oh, many of them. He mandated tampons in men's washrooms. Nice. You never know when a man is going to forget his tampons. That's true. He it happens often. Tons of government jobs, which is great because that means there's less tax cheating entrepreneurs. See, this is okay. Standard, I get her. I get her. Which is I great. I get what she's doing. I appreciate uh, the effort. So the other chicks dropping in bombs. I think people are doing it now to get followers. I don't even know, bro. No. Uh, uh, who uh, do they? Who do, what's oh, her name? Lily. And then yeah, I'm over her. <laughs> Then they use, you know, they use uh, infiltrators to like breach the likes of Project Veritas, James O'Keefe, to discredit those movements. Well, look, so, this guy, as far as I'm concerned, I love his late break and stuff, but it makes me laugh that every time he needs to, he's always goes on gay dates. Like I think at this point he's one, just one of them. One of them like, you could a, find a straight girl or something. He's like, nah, 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 bro. No, I think they did with the nah, uh, nah, nah, bro. We're going to the gays. What was the guy's name? <laughs> you want to watch a video? Like, I'm sucking. Uh, is this the video? This is the video. Let's see. I just know she lie. Oh no! Wait, oh, that's that's audio, audio commentary. Ah, uh, uh, TikTok. I don't necessarily support the ban, but my goodness, is TikTok a? Uh, uh, it's a, an intellectual cancer. Yeah, yeah, it is. It yeah. really, it really is terrible. Anyways, besides, it's okay. Uh, I'll go check it out later. I'm just curious. I'm, try, I'm just trying to think of the other feds now who I think like. Oh, uh, okay. Like in January 6, for example. Yeah. And I've been, I've been. Uh, I've interviewed him a couple of times. Jake Lang. You know Jake Lang, one of the Jan no. 6 defendants? He's a guy who's in jail for actual violence against police officers, but okay. he says, you know, it was self-defense. Um, and you get people calling him a Fed. It's it, it, The thing is, Fed, Mossad, agent, these terms have gotten used and abused to the point where they no longer mean anything. Epstein was Mossad, though. A th in my view, a thousand freaking... He, but not necessarily Mossad only. Mossad, MI6. He was Western intelligence. The five eyes. He was clearly intelligence. And he was clearly running a blackmail extortion ring. And what was I just listening to? Oh, it was the great awakening. And then I downloaded, um, Oh geez. I had her on the channel. Come on. Who she wrote that she, uh, Whitney Webb. I'm oh, sorry. Whitney Webb. She, she's, she's amazing. Uh, she wrote a two volume book. It's called one nation under blackmail about, um, Ooh. about Epstein, his ties to Mossad. Is it, people pick on them tied to Mossad because I, I think there might be a, a, an underlying intent to blame Israel in particular, but dude, blame the West. It, it, you know, England, Israel, America, it was intelligence without without a flipping question, and it goes deep. It goes like Epstein to to Ghislaine Maxwell, his partner, to her father Robert Watt Maxwell, who was definitively, as far as I understand, Mossad intelligence yep. died under suspicious circumstances. As they all do um, running an extortion ring for politicians back in the day, and then when it became the climate crisis uh, hysteria, running an extortion ring on scientists, getting Stephen Hawking's out there to get some punan like he's never gotten in his life, and then blackmailing them after that vegetable. No question. No question. You know what? I uh, I like this kind of stuff. I like going backwards and seeing the It all makes sense backwards. Because I wrote in, in Concordia when I was in university. I wrote a nice little article in American History about the people, uh, like the Federal Reserve and all that. It was called The Men Behind the Man. That's what I called it. Something. Sounds gay, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was about... There might, there might it be was about like the Federal well. Reserve and uh, about um, the silver standard that Kennedy was trying to implement. And then they blew his fucking head off. P publicly. It had to be the most horrifying public execution to met to let everybody know you don't mess with our you money you don't mess with the deep state and you yeah. don't you don't talk about breaking us up and you don't you don't fuck with our plans you will not scatter us to the wind sir we're going to scatter your one, one of the craziest conspiracy theories that i've heard about that was that it was jackie o who had a small handgun and oh, when no. jfk fell over she shot him in the head and I heard, I, the, I heard the same yeah thing. no i mean they show the video but it's like 
my go-to and the ones I trust in this, Mark Robert, Eric Hundley, I don't know if you know them, but they've got America's Untold Stories. They're the encyclopedia of the JFK assassination. Mark Robert actually wrote a book on it. Um, so there's, you know, there's levels to the conspiracy, but the actual one is the most horrifying. It was LBJ having his rival killed so he could be president. Or if he didn't have it happen, covering it up afterwards so he could be president. And um, also George Bush Sr.'s ties to all this. Uh, yeah, well, it's so wild. Uh, oh, I'm going to forget the connections, but it, it, it's, it'll blow everybody's mind. The only problem is it's been too long now. And it blew like, well, one guy's mind, let me tell you that. Pun intended. So having said that, Viva, this was a fun little uh, experience. We I think we're, do, we're, doing, we're doing good. Let me, well, see, if I go here now and see if there's anything in the chat. Well, I can't, you see, I can't get the Rumble Ranch or Super Chats. Let me go to vivabarneslaw.locals.com and see if there's any questions for Poseidon. The Poseidon the what, do you, what do you have coming up? Poseidon is over there. No, sorry, Poseidon, nothing, Pente- so. I did, then I've gone back to Everyone my brain does it. fart. Everyone does it. Uh, what do you They're got? not common names. Uh, no, Pente- dude. I've got, uh, I've got, you, you know what I do is I have the Patreon. That's how, that's my uh, survival mechanism is directly from the fans. So patreon.com slash Pantelis. Uh, and I produce podcasts in English and in French. I'm telling you guys, check out the intellectuals. The intellectuals, a two drink minimum, obviously, me and Mike Ward and Chris Ramsey uh, and Poseidon. But the intellectuals, I produce it. It's him and another intellectual. Obviously, we're using that term loosely. It is so insane. The lives these people lead is crazy. That guy, Adam, that I was telling you about, insanity, the, the life that he leads. Insanity. I don't yeah. know how he's still alive. Yeah, and, and this Thursday, the episode is... Uh, Tonight, the episode drops now, at 8 p.m. In, insanity in terms of drugs and debauchery? No, not even risk. drugs. He's just so... He doesn't, I don't know if it's like an autism thing. I was saying thing. this to Pantelis. I think we may have actually stumbled on a mystery of the universe. Yeah, he just doesn't get it. Like, he, he used to, before 9-11, he'd get on planes and just, you could lie. And he'd end up in places <laughs> where he was supposed to, like, get off the plane, but he didn't. He would just stay on the plane and end up in different countries. Try, try and, to do that these days. Oh, so. He doesn't, he can't do any of that shit. Just crazy life. He, he was, he, he ended up having to go to jail and then avoid it by doing house arrest for a couple of months because of an extortion campaign. They tricked him into like extorting a woman. He keeps getting tricked by Indian men online that pretend to be women and take his money. It's a crazy, hilarious life. Oh, well, I'll listen to that. I, I um might be on, I think I'm just checking to see if I got the yeah. confirmation text, but uh, Tommy Robinson might be on my oh, channel shit. six o'clock tonight uh, to talk about what the hell happened in, uh, in Trudeau's Canada. I want to know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, because I mean, the, the last news I heard is that he got arrested. It was apparently on an immigration offense, which I don't understand how that happens if you pass through. Some immigration. immigrants are offensive. No, no, but, but he already he already got his four hours of grilling, so they let they release him and then arrest him a week later. Uh, and there's conspiracy afoot, so we'll, we'll, we'll get it. Uh, We'll get it from Tommy Robinson. And tonight's the debate. Tonight's the debate, and you're going to be streaming it. I'm going to be streaming it. i got to double-check with Barnes. I'm going to be streaming it. I think Barnes, my partner in crime, is going to be... Uh, we're going to do it together. Good. Uh, there's discussion that he might be with another law tuber guy, Robert Govea, who's in Vegas. He's going to be streaming it from Trump Towers or one of the Trump Towers in Vegas. So there, it's going to be a stream fest tonight. I hope and, something funny happens. No, well, oh, something funny. But no audience, um, no... No, I don't know. No, no assistance, whatever. Um, what was I going to say? What about the earpiece that Biden's going to have? Well, that's the, the stick an earpiece in him. It'll malfunction. He, it'll malfunction his brain. Uh, no, what I was going to say is there's going to be lots of people streaming this, and it's going to be a, one heck of a night to follow politics. Let's fucking do it, Viva! You're the man, Pantelis. Thank you. Mm. How do we do this now? We're going to just look cool while this ends. Yeah, he's going to drink some water. He's going to put all our racial epithets on screen. <laughs> Cause we can't trust ourselves